part? Are you? It's thinking. Hey, it's a, hey, we, we are go. live. Sabaho, everybody. Sabaho, and welcome back to the channel. Um, it is another episode of Saturday Morning with Tech, and this time we have our friend of the channel, friend of the show, uh, a dear friend and ramen enthusiast, uh, you know, Juan Carlos Bagnell, and uh, we'll have a comment on that one, too. I have some good news on that part. Uh, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> yes, and... Um, and today we're back talking about another device. Uh, you know, this is I, I was I want to say season of devices, but we have a yeah, exactly the uh, the uh, the nice little device that just floats across the screen, the brand new iPhone SE 2020, um, also known obviously as the iPhone SE 2. Uh, Juan Carlos and I both uh, got our devices yesterday. We did a live stream um, on this channel as well. So I'll give you guys some more information in the description below to connect with Juan and of course uh, check out some of the other content that he's going to be doing. Um, if you're noticing that the channel, uh, the the stream is a little bit more professional, is uh, yeah, I'm learning new tricks in, in Streamyard, thanks to Juan's uh, recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> we learn and we grow. Exactly, it's a great little th uh, th you know service and it works great. Uh, but uh, first and foremost, obviously, Juan, how are you do? How are you doing? How how are things with you in iPhone SE land? I would say um, I didn't I mean to quit air quote. I, I meant it as a good thing. <laughs> T -t totally. Again, it's uh, I I've been getting a lot of those early comments like, "Uh oh, one's got an iPhone." Um, <laughs> no, it's, I I I've been doing doing pretty well, uh, especially from uh, from last night to this morning. Uh, I think you're probably in the same boat I am, where we're probably on what four or five hours sleep as we're trying to jam on these phones. Uh, you know, the the an early uh, the early first day impressions that we shared on my stream yesterday are still holding true. I'm I'm still heavily in this honeymoon phase. Uh, the excitement over having a return to the SE line, following the same philosophy of the original SE, and uh, knowing the number of family and friends that I think this is going to be a strong recommendation phone for. Getting into the second day, starting to do some of my performance testing, that that's still holding true. I I I have some increasing concerns over some aspects of this phone, but I think for the target demographic who, who this phone is really aiming for, um, I, I think it's going to be a treat. I think it's going to be a real treat for folks looking for that streamlined daily driver, and especially because uh, I, I we we talked a little bit about it before we jumped in the stream. Your yep. early impressions on something as simple as using a keyboard on a tiny screen apple has it's been a, doing this right for a while exactly exactly and i was i was very um like i anticipated it giving me a lot of errors having to go in and correct but no the the text prediction is actually pretty there it's on point um and it just made it easier for me to use it and not have to worry about you know what's the experience going to be is it that much uh you know uh, i would say watered down or there's kind of i like to use the word tailoring as as the best way to explain what the se experience is mm -hmm. it's tailored it's a tailored experience it's not a watered down experience because if you think about it at the end of the day, this is not trying to take an iPhone 11 or an 11 Pro Max user and say, hey, this is better. It's not going to be that way. And that's not the conversation that I think we need to have. Yeah, any, we, anyone, we, looking to, anyone looking to get a high performance flagship grade experience probably should be looking somewhere else. Um, yeah, you're not definitely. getting an iPhone 11 Pro on the cheap. That's not happening here. But exactly. you are getting a punchy little Mighty Mouse. And, and especially for a more streamlined communications device. Again, I, I, yeah. I don't want us tech geeks, those of us who happily jam on large screen phones and game and create content and do all this work mobile, I don't want us to lose sight of the actual average user experience. If we're concerned about that, there are other devices that help facilitate communication first and foremost. And now this is exactly. becoming one of those top options for me to recommend to, uh, to, to people in my social circles. Uh, no, and again, I, my, my thing is with this device is that it's, it is, it is that little, it's that little, <laughs> the, I think yesterday uh, over on your stream, we talked about it. I mean, it's kind of like that little Corolla that just is a consistent uh, type <laughs> yeah. of a performer that just keeps going. Um, you know, I, I mean, your SE, your first SE has the same software as the, as the version yeah. that we're looking at right now. Right. I mean, and that's already kind of like at the end, kind of, I would say on the stretch of, you know, the years for the SE. And this is something you want to consider. Apple is offering you 
a, a tailored experience for a 399 entry point. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about what the 399 entails, what that covers, and obviously the impressions there. Um, as Juan's doing his own testing in his own uh, in his own basically process that he goes through whenever we get a new device. And of course, I'm doing things on my end as well that I, I'm pushing out more content as well. Um, the, the SE for me is something that I mean, we always wanted to get it. We always we always aspired for it. We always heard rumors about it. It got announced and it got, basically they started shipping it out to people in literally a couple of weeks, barely. Yeah. I mean, you barely ordered it and suddenly, you know, you know, people are able to pick it up now and it's available on, on carriers. This is not just a, a direct phone that you can get directly. Uh, starts at 399. Uh, there's four different models, I'm sorry, three different colors and uh, three different configurations. Uh, the color that we both got was the product red. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go ahead and switch over on this end. And uh, the the product red version that we have here is obviously comes in the in the red box. It's pretty standard iPhone uh, unboxing. is not going to be any kind of super magical situation. It's pretty standard. Yeah, no box. one's going to be it's shocked true. or super excited by this unboxing. Uh, exactly. A Apple has not. Sadly, Apple hasn't really done much uh, as far as changing the aesthetics and surprising here. Uh, they do include a pair of headphones, wired uh, lightning ca cable, as well as a lightning USB C. Uh, sorry, USB A to lightning, no USB C connector, and of course the standard brick uh, with an iPhone. So you, you know, you, nothing again, nothing very exciting. I'm I'm going to say you should factor in the extra ten dollars to get a headphone dongle if you don't already have one. Exactly. Or if you're if you're choosing not to go Bluetooth, which I think it's what they initially kind of probably want you to do. I, I'm, but what you since, getting... since the iPhone what was it since the iPhone eight? I mean, it's been mm -hmm. an obvious game that Apple gets rid of the dongle so that you have to go out and buy some other type of headphones to connect to it. If you if you kept the dongle and you got rid of the ear pods, then you'd be able to hook up any headphones so and i think that that would be a better a better deal in the box i think it, from a price point it saves them having to actually source out because they, they already stock up on the actual dongles right they know mm -hmm. people are going to buy them might as well include that as opposed to a pair of headphones because chances are most people already have their own headphones they're not waiting to get the new iphone because of the headphones uh, but yeah, no no dongle in the box. Uh, that would be an additional accessory. And they do start at $399, which is what we both got. And those are the 64 gig models. So just keep in mind, 64 gig model for the $399, um, a $50 extra for, to go up to the $128, which personally, I think that's where you really I think should that's start. that's recommended. It's, yeah. Yeah, that's really the starting point. And it's, I, I feel like we've had this with Apple in, historically. They've always offered something more of an entry level. Uh, and that's, I think, mostly a price point. How did they get it down to that the best price point they can actually advertise? Not that it's a deception or anything like that. I'm just saying that's realistic. I mean, it's a device you can pick up, but I feel like 128 is where you should start. And then there is an additional, I think it's a hundred bucks difference there. Then you go into the, basically, obviously you're in 550 land uh, mm -hmm. if you want to get the 256. And uh, if you're considering keeping this for an, for an extended amount of time, the 128 or the 256, those are the ones you want to consider. For, sure. um, for me, it's a review unit, um, and I'm basically, and I did purchase it. We both purchased our own devices, uh, but I feel like it's something that you want to keep in mind where we're comparing it to what we would expect somebody paying $399 as that's the actual price that everybody's going to see on the billboards or whenever Apple is referencing this. That's the experience that we're going to be gauging. What do you get with Absolutely. 64 gigs? Is it enough? What can you do? And should you consider something else? So, And, and, and also it's... There, there's that bit of psychology. Um, whenever oh, we start absolutely. talking about price points, it seems like tech reviewers and tech enthusiasts only seem interested in kind of bookending. And a company like Apple always gets considerations at the starting prices, right? Yeah, This exactly. is a $400 phone. That's amazing. And then a company like OnePlus is getting all kinds of shade because their high-end device is 1000 Can you believe it? <laughs> You could spend very, $1,000 very, on a OnePlus, but this iPhone SE is, on, is only $400. And so it, it was really important to me to really check out, like, what is the starting experience on these things, mm -hmm. just like I did with my iPhone XS, just like I did for uh, borrowing an iPhone 11 Pro review yep. unit. You cannot really use an iPhone 11 Pro as a pro, as a content creation device at that 64 gig tier. You no. can't. You really no. can't. And, and, but and then I, yeah. I'm curious if, if the main argument isn't hardcore heavy lifting content creation for the iPhone SE. I, I'm, I'm wondering, like, is that 64 gig a bit more livable? Um, I'm having to be careful because my app install list these days is insanely large. And so I'm kind of having to buffer that against the fact that when I give this phone to my grandmother, 
she's mm -hmm. going to install four or five apps as opposed to the dozens of apps. <laughs> I, I had to phone. disable that. Yeah. When I was thinking, when I was setting up my device and I, and I used my, uh, my 11 pro max to sync my information over, I specifically took out all the transfer mostly because I have the 256 11 pro max and this is a 64. If I try to bring everything I want over, this ends up being basically a non-starter for me. I would like, I'll be spending hours. Yeah. 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 Th there's no question. So, um, I, I wanted to manually install uh, the apps I wanted to install. So if, if I'm playing a game, I'm going to play Fortnite or whatever, I'm downloading that specific directly into the device, testing it out, and then uh, seeing what's the maximum. <laughs> well, because what's going to happen, obviously, is uh, in the course of the next few days and weeks, we're going to be taking a lot of pictures, a lot of uh, videos with this. And that's when we're going to start seeing that stretch. I mean, are we really going to be comfortable using it, shooting 4K60 on the main sensor? Because that's a, I feel like that's the only way to shoot on the main sensor in the back. Um, I don't feel like you should even compromise or go anywhere else. 4K60 is is fantastic on this device. I, I don't, I don't know, that. TK. Maybe people who watch your streams just hate their families and never want to capture their family member <laughs> memories in the highest quality they can. Maybe, maybe in, that's it, what's going on. <laughs> If you Maybe hate it, your family and you family. don't want to see them in high quality, then shoot lower quality video. I guess that's fine. When you set it up that way, man, I mean, I think that the choice is clear. I think it's it, it's a clear <laughs> choice. I don't I don't think it's just something you need to even mess with it. Uh, before we go too far, I, I do want to give a quick shout out. We have Aditya Neil in the in the live stream. Gary the fisherman, of course. Uh, Steve. The, uh, Gary the fireman. Uh, I'm yeah, sure he yeah. probably enjoys fishing too, but uh, much respect to uh, first responders and uh, and helpers out there. So Gary, the yes, fireman. good morning, good morning, joining us uh, this morning as well as last night on your stream, um, of course, uh, Steve. And I I don't want to mess the name. I'm just going to say uh, D Deroche. No, I think it's De Roche. I keep it. Yes, every time I read it, There's I almost want to read I, it like a French the, way. The, so the last I mean, time I heard it, I feel like there was a slightly stronger accent on the first syllable than what I used to say. I still enjoy, in my brain, calling him De Rocher. That's it's, how, it's but, very, but that's, very, but that's yeah. not his name. So obviously he, that, that would be It isn't, and, but I do want to say thank you for, obviously, for pointing out it's a five-watt charger included in the box, that's, I think, which is that little brick that we saw a second ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, uh, we have, um, I think his, uh, Miser, I hope I'm saying it correctly. Ronald is in the, in the live stream. Gregory's also in there morning you guys. Uh, so Ronald welcome Collins everyone. saying, Hey, Ronald Collins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here too. Good job. Exactly. A lot, a lot of, a lot of familiar faces and I'm happy everybody's able to make it. And, uh, Chris, uh, Chrisen is also in there in the morning as well. So, um, so since we had a conversation last night, we didn't really get a chance to do, uh, I mean, we did more things. I did actually get a chance to test out the IP67 rating on this. Um, I, I was kind of bummed a little bit that I couldn't actually go out and do my normal, uh, take out my son. We go to the pool, obviously hot weather, yeah, perfect yeah. time to go Even swim. Perfect time to do it. But uh, surprise, surprise, I actually don't own that pool. It's a community pool for my area. So I generally can't, we, we can't do that video but then it yeah, kind of hit me our, a little. Our pool got shut down too, so we're we're like in the same boat. Like we'd love to go, just kind of dunk Lex underwater, uh, but we can't. So. Yeah, uh, this is the we are. It's a it's a tough time, obviously, current situation, of, of course. Um, so for me, what I did essentially is I, I did want to give you guys a kind of an experience. So that's the first video that's going to be coming out from me on the channel, uh, just kind of giving out initial impressions of the device, uh, basically hours worth of impressions. I'm not going to say a day's worth exactly, but. Um, we, we both got our devices later in the afternoon and um, mm -hmm. just testing out the speaker, a quick, a few samples of the camera, front facing, back facing, and, and then of course uh, some pictures, but mostly the water. And it really performed the exact same way as my iPhone 8. So I, I felt like I almost want to just basically repost my iPhone 8 video, change the title and say, <laughs> you know, the only problem I couldn't pull that off, obviously, is I didn't have a beard back then. And my son didn't have teeth in the front. So his front teeth weren't there. And he looks a lot younger than he is now. So I like, uh, it's how okay. Great would it I, be is if you just took the audio track and every time you said iPhone eight, you heard this like so just, iPhone S E X E. Exactly. <laughs> just, I should just do that and see how if people were like you know find that funny or just like he's cheating. I'm like no. Uh, I, I mean the, the bummer is is like you know you know other other reviewers you know people like us would think it was hilarious. Hilarious. Anyone exactly. who just like searched 
and yeah. stumbled onto that video without knowing you. Like, what, uh, what's this? This is garbage. She's just trying to fake it. This isn't how, it's the, not real. This is exactly no. It but um, <laughs> the, the, obviously the device is IP67 rated, so obviously it, it's intended to actually have some kind of ingress protection. So you want to keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Um, but I always want to say this, and I'll, I do say that also in the video, make sure that if you ever do consider putting your water, your device in water, do not do that if you've had any kind of damage, any kind of um, aesthetic damage, cracked display, you've dropped the device in a position where there's some dings on the actual structure on the outside, or even if your SIM card is not closed entirely. I always make sure to put yeah. that as a disclaimer uh, because that actually compromises the integrity of the IP67 rating that you have in there. That could actually allow water in there and, of course, ultimately causing uh, harm or damage. Uh, even though iPhone, Apple says that it is IP67, uh, they're not going to replace your phone if water gets in there. That's yeah, It's not I, one I, of the I things that broke, they replace it. I only broke two devices in my tenure at uh, pocket now and the iphone 8 plus slipped out of my pocket from about a foot and yeah. landed on the metal trim on concrete and that was enough to dent the metal frame mm -hmm. crack the front face um left a gap that you know uh, would easily have, have completely compromised the water resistance on that and, and required replacing the whole phone so because there was a, a that tiny little dent into the aluminum frame, it could not be repaired. So for as much as we like to to champion, you know, lifestyle durability and survivability, uh, these devices aren't real. And, and this goes for any glass on glass sandwich. This is not unique Absolutely. to Apple. It's just they're built in a way where your repair uh, options considerations are probably minimized just through the sheer virtue of the design philosophy um, yep. that, that I felt like probably would have been a pretty common or survivable uh, incident on an older phone with a removable back or, you know, bigger metal border, or bigger bezels. Uh, you know, again, I'd had that iPhone eight plus for less than a week. I had to replace the whole phone, you know, like that's, th that's the reality of what this, uh, uh, of what this trim looks like. So IP 67 is an admirable, um, survivability it's it's great to have that rating absolutely i think yep. a lot of i think a lot of the situations where people would accidentally test their ip rating also probably involve drops and and that's a bit more concerning that that's a little bit more than I, I think with drop test for me it's more how does the protection happens when you're when you purchase a case that is providing you that level of protection dropping the for device sure. without a case Unless that's how you normally rock the device. I mean, if you're normally just a device without a case, and this is how you like to, you know, protect your investment uh, or your purchase, I think in in a sense, uh, I feel like that's something that that's up to you at that point. You need to kind of accept the fact that you are going to have dings, scratches, and and drops. So um, I'm debating on that one. Uh, I'm waiting to see if there's going to be I'm some accessories. To, I'm real tempted to try and rock this naked, but I think I am going to go pick up an old iPhone 8 case um, and and just kind of <laughs> pop that on there. It, it wasn't the, the, even me. It was, uh, I got the phone. I had just taken it out of the box. Marie has an iPhone 8 for work. So she just mm -hmm. wanted to see, you know, like, is is anything really different here? And she, I hand the phone to her. And and I don't know what it is about my wife. And, and I've, I, I've, I apologize, Marie, for airing her dirty laundry here. She seems incapable of grabbing a piece of electronics and transferring mm -hmm. it. So like when I hand someone a phone, I hand it to them in a way that they they hold the phone and they can instantly start using it. I don't know how she does this, but every time she hands a phone back, I, it like I can't. It, it's like in some weird upside down it, half it, diagonal yeah, that, configuration, and I don't know how she bends her wrist like that. But anyway, I hand the phone to her. She she takes it from me, and then the first thing she does in turning it over, she almost drops it. <laughs> I mean, it has just come out of the box. And that's and, how we uh, lost. That's how we lost Juan Carlos. That's, how one. <laughs> that, that's exactly <laughs> your heart drops at the at, at the moment that happens. <laughs> but I mean, to that same uh, token, for as much as I love the original iPhone SE and the iPhone five and the metal back, my iPhone SE has lived in a little bumper case. So I really do think I need to do the same for the iPhone eight. Yeah, I mean, no, no, I, 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 
three ninety nine is it's not it's not a junk uh, you know uh, it's not actually you know inexpensive enough that you're like oh I don't care it, it's still four hundred bucks I mean when you think about tax obviously it's four hundred and thirty something so mm -hmm. um, cases options and th so on so th those would be the things that you want to keep in mind and of course if you're going to test that level of uh, you know protection just understand that you are throwing the IP sixty seven out the door the moment you you get any oh, yeah. kind of damage on your device. And and that, I mean this this also like because neither of us do gadget destruction porn like we're no. neither of us into trying to damage a device because at the at the end of the day, if you try to break a phone, you will succeed. <laughs> like oh, you'll oh, you're oh, gonna oh. win. That's a dumb prize to win. So I, I don't recommend purposely going out of your way to try and check out things like how water resistant it might be or how how drop durable it might be. Now, without giving out too much, I do have a piece of tech coming in, in the mail that is rated to take a beating. It's a, uh, mm. it's a, it's not a smartphone. It's a flip phone. It's a, it's a, a device that I, an early version of a device that I reviewed a while back. And then the company reached out. They loved the video, and they're like, "Hey, we just released a new one. Would you like to check it out?" But this is intended literally to be tossed. So I, uh, it's weird. So but we you gotta, may, we, we got yeah, it. That again, one. If they, if they make the claim, you have to. It it's they drove they drove a car you're, over. You're doing over one of them, your so. journalistic due diligence. Exactly. So we got it. We always got to basically, uh, you know, in, improve the the durability. But uh, circling back with the iPhone, I think the way the SE is is intended to, to work. Obviously, it's a smaller form factor. We have a 4.7 inch display here. It is a IPS 720p resolution display, so you're not going to be really, obviously you know you don't want to look at a you know, 1080p or QHD when you're looking at a display this small. 720p is actually quite it's good enough for the resolution. It gives you a good enough PPI, about 331 in there, so that you get the the icons and everything looks great. Uh, the home screen, the setup. We don't have dark mode, which I'm a little bit bummed about. Although, if you start opening up certain applications, you notice that there's a dark theme in there. So that, to me, is a little bit of a kind of an interesting. Like uh, this is uh, you know Juan Carlos and myself. I was trying to set up the Aww. thumbnail. Uh, Those are happy days uh, when we can still like uh, go uh, hang out with that person. Have lunch, you know. Go have go have a you know a uh, a burger together or some ramen, which I, I appreciate. So uh, a lot of things going on, but you notice, you know, you know, Instagram does have the dark theme on it, uh, and of course, uh, Twitter does also, also supports it. So UI doesn't have it, but I feel like this is a great entry way to get us into the iOS ecosystem. If you're looking into getting a device like that, um, and again, the three ninety nine price point is definitely very nice. Um, Stereo, I, I want to say stereo speakers, but not as loud as you uh, as you've seen them in other devices. Uh, I played music. I seem to feel like the bottom firing speaker performs quite well. Um, audio mm -hmm. level is actually pretty loud. Um, you're able to obviously access all of the Apple services if you're looking into basically is there a limitation in there? No. Uh, Apple TV, uh, HomeKit, uh, the Apple Watch. Uh, if you've preferred, if you want to be able to use an Apple Watch, uh, as Juan Carlos as well, be able to use that there. This is going. This is going to do exactly the same experience for you if you're from a usability function, not a camera performance, not horsepower, uh, as a standard iPhone would. So it's Apple's not skimming on anything. It's giving you the full experience that you'd expect from an iPhone. Uh, where it does actually kind of tailor the experience, and I think we're going to start talking about it with you know with Juan Carlos, is mm -hmm. when we start talking about the cameras, um, you know, obviously the storage capabilities, uh, the uh, the other internals that they decided to do, and uh, as you know, I, how how are you, how are you feeling about the fact that they decided to go with, uh, I, I would say a tried and true proven design of you know the six, the seven, and the eight. Uh, iPhone that they they chose. Do you feel like it's a good fit? Is it should they have gone and try to re renovate? You know, bring in a new design with this one. So, so my my feelings on this have gotten even stronger from our conversation the last night. Yeah, uh, this is the design that iOS was built around. iOS as a software environment was built around this this style use and form factor, and. Mm -hmm. For as much as we've seen these incredible improvements to iPad OS, I don't think iOS has managed the transition to larger form factors nearly as gracefully. And I really wish Apple would start looking at some of the usability usage concerns. Uh, Viper, uh, Viper had a great, a great stream last night. I, I felt so bad for Viper because I got my SE and captain of Team Apple did not get his SE yesterday. I, whatever travesty of shipping um, you know, somewhat, we all should be writing angry letters to try and get Vipe his, his iPhone. Um, uh, you know, things like split screen, picture in picture, the, the, mm -hmm. the applications that we kind of take for granted 
as power users on Android, especially getting into folding phones and dual screen devices, I, I feel like Apple has lagged behind in giving us the reasons for why larger screen devices really support this extra real estate outside mm -hmm. of like video consumption, which is fine. That That is a, a an acceptable like an extra perk or a benefit, but there's more we could be doing with more space. Getting back to the SE, it's, yep. I am very happy um, as a smartphone recommender because um, I love Mighty Mouse little small form factor devices. I still regularly check in and revisit my Xperia Compact. Um, I like I my main go to phone before the SE arrived was the original SE because mm -hmm. Face ID is kind of garbage when I go outside and I have and I'm wearing a mask because I'm immunocompromised. Um, exactly. Yep. Touch Touch ID is is always better. I M O. <laughs> and, and 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 not just that because it's not just a knock on Apple and Face ID. It's that a, a dedicated hardware fingerprint sensor significantly outperforms in display fingerprint sensors, and I think it's more versatile and it's more useful in more situations than Face Unlock. I, I cannot tell you that one adaptation in A13 with a reasonable camera improvement. We're still in like iPhone 10R camera quality, which isn't bad. That's that's perfectly acceptable performance and a dedicated fingerprint sensor. This is such a beautiful combination. I cannot say enough nice things about it. And then from the business perspective, this makes so much sense for keeping yep. Apple's profitability high. They've had this no. parts in manufacturing on this on this frame on this build is stupid cheap and, and it exactly. really drives home the point to me the next time i hear some dopey tech enthusiast complaining about a tiny little design accent change and consumers need more exciting devices and that's why these products don't sell and lg this and motorola that apple is going to sell tons literally metric Tons, tons of these iPhones and this design has not changed significantly since the iPhone 6. You cannot tell me you can't. You you have now completely failed with the argument that crazy radical aesthetic changes from year to year matter in the slightest. They exactly. do not matter. You make the right tool for the right job, and that's what people are going to buy. And I really wish some more Android manufacturers out there would start recycling their frames, their shells, and mm -hmm. just improving the guts inside. And I think that would make so much more money for so many of these companies, especially those that are struggling outside, like the top three, the top five. Start doing this. It's better. It, it's something that they need to they need to obviously uh, capitalize on, and I think that it, it, this is a great lesson. I think, if nothing else, uh, for how Apple's able to do it, based on what Apple's have, um, you know, the chipset, the A13. Everybody's rant, you know, not not ranting, but raving about the fact that obviously we have mm -hmm. a flagship uh, chipset in the device that is sub four hundred bucks or four hundred bucks, basically. It's four. It's uh, not sub four hundred dollars. It, it's four hundred. It, it, it's four hundred. I. It's I'm that whole, rounding up that uh, one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's the U.S. thing. We we like to do. You know, it's not two dollars. It's a dollar ninety nine, and it's not four hundred. It's three ninety nine. It's that ability of putting the first number as most people's attention kind of right. That's what they yeah. remember the first number. So like, I'm, oh, it's I'm saying something. For, you uh, we're simpatico. We're saying four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll say four. We'll go there. Um, and um, I, I, you know, actually, the design is actually nice. It's it's a classic. I mean, when you look at it, obviously, it's not trying to scream. Uh, look at the innovation. Look at what they did. It's, it, they are basically building on something they know what to do with, and they have the production line to support it that's been there for years. And, uh, you know, again, I would love to be able to see uh, you know, something using even the, eight, uh, you know, if, uh, like a design from last year, like an, an S10 with an 8, 8, 865. Bring back the headphone jack. You can capitalize on the fact that if you had a problem there with the battery, you had good devices. I mean, 2019 isn't that long ago. We're only about four months in. Um, it just It's something we have to keep in mind that, uh, and, I, and we've done other videos, and I think we mentioned it last night. If you have an S10 or an S10 Plus, something that you bought me barely a year ago, 
there really is very little other than like a 5G and maybe wanting to have 120 hertz that would really compel you to say, I got to jump over on the, this year's model. I think this is more, you really need to start understanding and appreciating what you have. Um, and, you know, it, it wouldn't be a bad idea to consider buying a device that is from 2019. Uh, they're reasonably priced right now. You can purchase, um, I think I bought one for, for $399 for an S10. It was a renewed model, obviously, so it'd be a little bit more if it was new. But again, it performed great. It's a great little device. Gave it to my mom and it works really nice. So for me, well, it's... We got, we got sidetracked on my stream last night because someone brought up like, yeah, I, I spent $200 on an LG G8. And you're like, okay, so you know, $400 exactly. and the A13 is going to be a little faster in some situations than a Snapdragon 855. But a $200 LG G8 is a pretty solid buy too so um as long as we don't get sidetracked to somebody saying hey, i can i can <laughs> i can i perform much better with a 35 dollar uh, nexus one so we want to do nexus For one sure. we could do next one uh, i'm so it, it i cannot tell you how happy i am that you had that within reach just to go sproink <laughs> here's my nexus one it, hey man the, the iphone se is not that small it's a big device man if you're rocking a Nexus One, the definitely this uh, is the device. Who could handle such a phablet? Uh, I know, it just I know. Made me throw up in my mouth. Not, not even a front-facing camera. And look at, look at that beautiful That's camera hilarious. footage right there. Overexposed. God help us. Uh, and I can't take pictures because I don't have an that, SD card. <laughs> that makes me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an SD card in the phone. Oh my God. <laughs> that makes me so happy. That and that, 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 it, that a... it still boots. That again. Oh that's, that's yeah. Uh, I had to charge it 100% before it even recognized that it wanted to boot up. But yes. Um, so going backwards, uh, what have you been playing with? What What are some of the things that you've been testing with it? I, I know we talked last night a little bit about the battery. Um, obviously some concerns yeah, those, around the battery life and so on. Definitely have some concerns there. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I just finished the script for a video that I'm hoping to have out this afternoon. And for those of you watching right now, I'm going to spoil the major points of it here. Um, when we look at synthetic benchmarks, I, I, I need to, to, to correct myself. I was, uh, I was in the chat on Viper stream yesterday and I was looking at a lot of performance stuff where, um, there were some concerns that maybe Apple's throttling the A13 in this new mm -hmm. SE. Uh, it seems to me that single core performance is exactly the same and where Apple is backing off is on multi-core, multi-threaded performance. And we see that in some benchmarks, but these performance numbers also seem to be resolution dependent. What I was benchmarking on the iPhone 11 Pro when I had it at the end of 2019, I'm seeing consistently higher numbers on the SE. So I, uh, it, it might ring true. This is this is something that held true for the original SE. Having the lower resolution screen meant this phone outperformed higher resolution versions with the same chipset. I think we'll see something similar here with the SE 2020, even for some light throttling on multi-core performance. Uh, exactly. Video rendering has finally caught up to Android. This is the first uh, iPhone I've ever reviewed where Apple's claims about content creation and cr creating cinematic content and editing on your phone mm -hmm. finally catch up to, um, to, to, to what Android has been able to offer. Uh, when, I, when I'm looking at you know, uh, more heavily rendered projects, you know, fades, transitions, watermarks, soundtrack, you know, really quick, tight editing, rendering mm -hmm. at UHD quality, uh, the SE is neck and neck. Um, oh, wow. with, uh, with the, the LG V60. I mean, they're, they're ne right next to each other. So that's really exciting um, because even the iPhone 11 Pro, and again, I haven't, re I haven't retested the iPhone 11 Pro since January. So it, okay. I'm sure performance has improved on the 11 mm -hmm. Pro, but comparing the SE to the V60 and the OnePlus 8, we're, I mean, it, it's so close. It, it, it's we're, we're in margin of error territory for any differences in the rendering and editing performance. Uh, the 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 main concern still holds for battery though. Okay. Yeah. Where where that, that... I would do this UHD rendering on a one plus eight, and it barely registers in the battery stats on the phone. Like it's at the bottom of the list, way below like screen on time. It's like oh, and here's Kinemaster at like four percent of your battery draw. Exactly. Yeah. I lost a lot more of my battery <laughs> on the iPhone SE. Like oh, so wow. much of the battery, I, I am ranking it as extremely um, 
as, as a very poor field work solution. So like I was saying before, if you're if you're wanting to look at an iPhone SE like this is going to be the phone that I can get an iPhone 11 Pro on the cheap. A number one with a bullet, the reason why we spend more for an iPhone 11 or an iPhone 11 Pro is the battery. If you really try to run this phone hard, it's got the tiniest gas tank for having one of the most powerful chipsets in a mobile device. You're going to nuke this battery. You're going to be charging it way more frequently. That battery is going to throttle your phone much, much faster. And you should factor in the costs of a battery replacement within the life cycle, if not two battery replacements within the life cycle of the phone, if you really expect to tap into that horsepower on the regular. Definitely. That, yeah, and that's that, those are the things we need to keep in mind, specifically with the fact that it is. I mean, you're you're limited by size. And that's actually, speaking of which, when you were talking about the going for an 11 Pro for the battery, that's actually one of the reasons why I go with the max size. I actually want mm -hmm. to get the biggest, the, the best experience, but also the battery that I don't need to charge because historically we've had it where you know iPhones have weren't necessarily the the I would say the all day champs, but we've gotten improvements over time. Batteries have gotten bigger. We've also obviously switched over from IPS to OLED. They've done sure. certain certain things to help us actually save battery. Uh, but you know what? I I think at the end of the day. For me, when I started looking at this, as far as rendering and, and producing content from this, there's going to be that form factor. Uh, if if this is a device that you're upgrading to, you're coming into from a smaller device or something that's more comparable in the size of 5 inch to 4.7, I feel like the experience is going to be definitely tailored there. I think this is a great device for uh, like a first time iPhone, the first iPhone to actually get into to get experience yeah. with it. Um, and especially I haven't like had... for parents out there concerned about kids, you know, like, yeah. It's going to exactly. hurt your heart way less than if you got them an iPhone 11. <laughs> and and oh, you know they're going to smash it. So. Uh, when you see that phone flying or when you see them <laughs> sitting there and then they turn, and but the hand keeps turning and the phone keeps going. Those are the things that you want to obviously keep in mind or think about it in, in there. And um, before we go too far, I do want to say good morning to Josh. Josh Vergara joins us in the oh, live stream Josh, as well. He, he's back in. Uh, obviously, as you know, Josh was on the channel, uh, on the, on the show last week and, uh, hanging out, checking I out, mean, checking in there this morning. one too. I, I don't know. I mean, like Josh, if you're camera presentable, uh, can, can we, can we kick him a link? You'd, yeah, would, would, no, would you absolutely. In for, for a gadget threesome. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, he's the one who convinced me to, to pay for the service. Uh, let me see actually. Uh, I'll tweet. I'll tweet I mean, it again, over to him. You on the spot, Josh, if if you're you know doing something, you're in the middle of something. I just uh, I, I I was so frazzled and fried yesterday. I didn't even think to extend the invite, and I apologize. I should have kicked you a link to say, "Hey, come and join us on my stream." We'll crash on. So so instead, We're back. I'm I'm throwing I'm throwing TK under the bus uh, to try and try and get it, you it, on here too. It's something that you want to keep in mind, uh, Josh, if, you, if you're wanting to join in. Let me go ahead. I'll, I'll throw the link over to him if I can. Here it is. So, yeah, no, Josh, definitely. He has his as well. We did a, a quick live stream together yesterday on, um, I think, on Pocket Now. So he was doing the live stream for Pocket Now, uh, and he got a chance to basically check it out. So it was he has he got it first. I feel like I think he got it ahead of both of us. Oh, yeah. Um, he's and, yeah, I, I, all I have to say is I, I want to go check out his, uh, you know, the the uh, the UPS delivery person from his side because they got everything. So let me go ahead and do this. <laughs> so I went ahead and just shot the the link over. Josh, if you're able to join, please do so. And I think you know we'd we'd love to but, get but your totally opinion on this. And he's he's saying that he's just in a tank top right now, and I don't think that would bother anyone in our audience. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that was it's, that, it's, that's for the, the way, after dark show. That's for the after is, dark. Man. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Again, I'm throwing your channel under the bus here. By the way, it's really hard to do a tongue trill when you're doing Invisalign. Like it. Oh, okay. Like uh, I had to really think about that, where you know my normal cultural background would have allowed me to do that just on the fly. That was that was harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> anyway, sorry. It I, is. I it's all right. Uh, we'll get. Yeah. We'll digress. Yeah, yeah, Josh. The link is in the. Uh, <laughs> the link is in the uh, in uh, but, over but, there if you'd like to join. But, but definitely, but to kind of piggyback on, on your point there. It, this is this is precisely why the iPhone SE I think is is going to be one of those spotlight products to help us talk about the differences in phones in a very practical way. When I pick up an LG V60, I am picking up a workstation phone that's exactly, pretty good yeah. at gaming 
and is very good for content creation and is excellent for audio. And when consumption. I pick up, yep. When I pick up a Galaxy S20, I am picking up a workstation phone. When I pick up a, a OnePlus 8, I'm picking up a streamlined cart racer. You know, this is a little track buggy, a, a zippy little knife fighter of a phone. Super on, sleek, on super crack, quick, super on crack. That, that, exactly, Absolutely. very fast, exactly. When I pick up an iPhone SE, I'm picking up one of the best communicators that I think we've seen in recent in recent memory. Th this, this notion of we're only going to compare, we're only going to review off of one benchmark, off of one spec, or we allow one spec to be a deal breaker, like, you know, a screen refresh rate. Nope, can't buy the phone. Doesn't have that one number on the spec sheet that I wanted. Exactly. We are completely missing the, the, the broader picture on what these devices can do. And the iPhone SE is, is going to be unfairly compared to a bunch of devices for YouTube channels that are looking for better metrics in SEO. Exactly. And, yeah. uh, and, and instead, what we should be doing is highlighting the fact that we actually do have a phone market that's starting to resemble the laptop market. This is the biggest critical victory over the last three years that we're starting to get some crazy experimental designs and cases and dual screen from Microsoft and from LG. We're starting to get foldables from Samsung and from Huawei, TCL showing off some concepts. We're finally getting some more budget competition in the four to $600 space here in North America in the United States. And we have tiny options for people looking at streamlined interactions where we've got massive, huge, big battery players. We've got exactly. tablet replacements and phones that can rival laptops for, for heavy lifting workloads. This exactly, is yeah. the broad spectrum that we should be trying to achieve. And now I think Apple has given us one of the best shots at streamlined small form factor. If this doesn't kick the butt of, of a, a, our top Android manufacturers to start reconsidering this small form factor, efficient price, reasonable compromises for great performance, I don't know what will convince them to get off their asses and start honing in on these specific consumer demographics. Those are the things that people need to realize. There, there's in at least in the U.S., we have a gap now. There's a there's somewhat of a gap as far as the price point, and uh, what you're looking at is something that I, I think the Asian market has been actually ahead of us in, in many ways, providing huge different, the yeah, here, yeah. There's so many more options outside of the U.S. and we're starting to see some of them. I mean, Xiaomi's starting to produce uh, more more devices externally and for for international markets. Um, gaming devices, surprisingly, gaming devices Huge. are the ones that I'm finding are hitting that mid tier, like around the five hundred dollar price point. Uh, you know, like the Red Magic Five G, one hundred and forty four hertz. Uh, you know, eight sixty five uh, LPDDR five. You're getting you know speed and performance and even an actual fan on a smartphone for about five hundred. So the the market is getting there but i feel like it's still international it hasn't really hit the us market yet apple is in a way setting that trend telling everybody look i'm competing in this realm now you better bring your your basically your your version of what you want to do in this game for right now for us because this is something that we need to always make sure it's going to work for you uh, it's going to give you the uh, the apple experience the software update the, the camera performance that you I think for what you have works great. And again, it's a tailored experience for 399. But again, 4K60, that actually is very nice on the main sensor in the back. I, I will get a chance to do more videos. And I'm sure I personally am looking forward to your deep dive uh, on the camera for, sure. uh, for, for the phone. Uh, but I'll, I'll already, let, let me spoil another part of the commentary because again, I'm only a day in, but um, the iPhone SE makes me very frustrated that I bought the iPhone XS at full retail. Similar yep. camera sensor performance. Uh, there's no zoom sensor, and I'm not bothered by that. I don't think the zooms have ever been critical uh, companion cameras. But uh, the fact that apparently the Apple A12 chipset in my iPhone XS mm -hmm. is not powerful enough to give me the new camera UI, which gives me 16 by 9 crops on photos. It, it's, is it's, it's concerning. So that that extremely yeah. frustrating for a phone that cost me $1,000 that I can't get that new, better streamlined camera UI. I don't think that's okay. I'm not even no. like complaining about like night mode, right? It, no. It's it's so silly that a $400 pixel can absolutely crush my 
thousand dollar iPhone 10s for things like low light photography, especially where it's all computational. There's nothing hardware dependent about that low light photography. And now here comes the iPhone SE getting refreshed camera specs and performance over a very similar camera sensor where I'm very confident this is not CPU limited. The A12 no. should be able to give me a 16 by crop, a 16 by nine crop by nine view in my viewfinder. <laughs> I, and I think I think the reality is we need we need better support, especially for devices that are you know it, this isn't even that old. It's literally like last generation before we haven't even seen the iPhone 12s yeah. in there. So those are things that we need to keep that. And uh, before it disappears, because there's the whole timer thing that goes on this. I want to say thank you very much to Gary, the fireman, uh, and thank you for everything. Obviously for the support as well as uh, hanging out with us this morning and for the super chat as well. Um, much respect, and also, Gary. We really appreciate it. Yes, I, I mean, and you're you know, you're in it for the long haul. You were with us last night for the you know two two hour stream that or the so, one hour stream that went so to two. It was so, <laughs> and just kind of a teaser. We kept talking for a little bit more after the stream was over. Oh uh, man, it's <laughs> it, it's uh, it's one of those conversations that we always have to you know appreciate having your support and of course the fan base and and the support of the uh, you know the the some gadget guy the lab. Everybody on on Juan Carlos's side, I appreciate it always. I've been big, big fan. I've been supporter there. Um, one question as well, we do have here coming in from JGJ, uh, first time viewer. Welcome. I like the I like the avatar. Um, Nokia's Android One devices have a decent track record for updates um, on a Nokia seven point one right now. Can't wait for the mid range five G, but tempted for the for the obviously the SE twenty twenty. Um, I think, yeah, no, uh, Android One uh, Android One devices are very, very nice and easy to update. As far as the from a, from a developer's point of reference, mostly because of the limited amount of customization that's done on yeah. the OEM. So it it takes into a big factor into what what um, amount of time the when from when Android when Google releases the code and it's available for developers or even for OEMs to push out to the device. It's very minimal. I think Motorola for a while was doing a great job being able to push out updates right out as soon as uh, Google releases them. Um, Samsung's doing better, but I feel like that's a little bit more of a, you know, I think that's something that they've gone stepped up ahead there. But from a from a Nokia, from, a, from the 7.1, uh, I think it's a great, uh, you know, yeah, proof of what you I, can do with it. When, when it comes to Android One, um, the, the, the farther you stray from a streamlined, pure stock Android experience, you start to see where these arguments fall apart for uh for updates um the the nokia 9 i think shows us a very good example of android one can only take you so far if you've got mm -hmm. a ton of sort of non-standard hardware and a lot of software uh customization um that's gonna get in the way of any type of android one certification and and the nokia 9 i think struggled with with some of those updates keeping up with security patches Precisely because there's so much custom work that has to be done. And I think the same thing holds true. I, I, I recently just got like another sort of flurry of tweets from people saying like, man, I really wish LG would go pure stock, but still give me all of these great features. And and I, I, this, 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 this idea never really seems to resonate or it never really seems to break through. Mm -hmm. Software is more than just the skin. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it, it's not. It isn't. Yes. I'm going to say Sorry. that again. Software is more than just the skin. The launcher is one aspect on top. So you take a exactly. phone like the V60 and you've got a code for the digitizer and all of the services that tie to that pen, like shortcuts, um, accessibility options. Off-screen uh, uh, shortcuts. Yeah, all of those things. Off-screen shortcuts that... and pen touch and, 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 and screen off notes. You've got to code a tremendous amount of work into the quad DAC because it's mm -hmm. not just a headphone jack. You've got to license a bunch of audio processing technologies. You've got a code for a dual stage amp. You've got a code for uh, line out um, EQ, 3D audio. That is an insane amount of custom software for one part of the phone. It's just for the headphone jack. And then you throw in all exactly. of the other the other features, the camera settings, the apps, all of the integration for. Uh, well, the dual display functionality, uh, the you know, all of those extras. There is so much more that goes into the background, um, and, so and that's, that's why we software is. And then you look at something like the Nokia Nine. It's labeled Android One, but a five camera array with a time of flight sensor requires right. oh, sure. an inordinate amount of custom coding, stapled on top of Android to make something like that even 
somewhat functional, oh, no, no. <laughs> let alone as good as it was. And it's that level of customization, whatever they decide to just start, they need to add like for that custom camera array that we have there. Um, or even if we do get in there and Motorola decides to put in the Moto Shake, you know, the, the little, little actions that they're doing, that needs time to actually come out. I mean, the, the true, true stock experience uh, doesn't have any of those custom things. And every manufacturer wants to have that unique little, uh, I would say I call a signature card kind of thing just to keep it so that people know this is a uh, this is obviously an lg so the quad DAC uh, is something that lg is known for now if you don't have it um and if you try to ever think about it from a development standpoint like you know when you get a when you do unlock if you decide to unlock your device and if you decide to go down, down the modding uh, options uh something you want to keep in mind that's generally where most of the developers are facing cons uh, issues is where they're having to basically backwards engineer all of this functionality especially when some of the code for those like the quad deck and so on, not everything on, yeah. on the hardware. Yeah. So there are certain things that they don't have access to directly and they have to rely on open source type of tech, uh, code that they actually kind of substitute. Or so, licensed APIs. I mean, uh, you want to talk about some of those dark days of like, uh, was it the OnePlus X and how, you know, we, we ran into issues with getting um, operating system updates and it was because exactly. of licensing and APIs and Qualcomm's control. Over exactly. The market that ultimately shuttered that phone again one plus got the brunt the the majority of yeah, the, the, anger, the flag on that but you know that was a situation that was largely out of their control because that's the reality of the the sort of the android chipset market are, are, are you looking at or did i lock up it, it is and the, well, speaking of there we're still good Okay, uh, I, I I can never tell. Like you kind of paused on me, and I I'm pretty sure it was my connection that just futzed us out. So it was, yeah, we we had a little blip uh, a few minutes ago. I but, mean, uh, we've been hitting Streamyard pretty hard, so their their uh, servers are probably smoking just from our streams alone. Exactly, and uh, uh, thanks to to Steve as well hitting us with that super chat. Um, this actually, I think, feel like it's more specifically pointed to you. Would you recommend uh, the iPhone XR? So the 10R, obviously, as a budget iPhone. Oh. Um, if you're considering basically getting in either the SE or the uh, you know the 10R. Uh, okay, if I'm going to answer this question, it, it largely depends on it, it largely depends on how much you care about feature parity. Mm -hmm. um, I, I made a big play out yesterday that my original iPhone SE got 13.4.1. Like it got the mm -hmm. most recent software update as everyone else. But we know for a fact that it is way behind on features compared to modern, modern iPhones. The fact that we're making this iPhone SE transition today with an A13, just like the original SE back in the day, that means mm -hmm. this is the new low end. We're moving forward from here, and this is the oldest chipset that Apple's going to support for, I'm sorry, I should hold up the, the current iPhone SE. Uh, I was this, is, say. this is the, the oldest chipset that Apple is going to be supporting moving forward. If you have something like uh, you know an, an A9 or an A10, you're probably still getting the security patches and operating system updates, but when we're looking at the new performance track, this this is the starting point. So mm -hmm. the iPhone 10R still has a lot of life left left in it. Yeah. I am increasingly crazy frustrated that my iPhone 10S is off the bandwagon for any kind of new features. If I want again, if, if I want a tiny change in my camera UI, I have to buy a new phone. And that to me drives me nuts. Um, but if you're looking at a phone that's just going to be well supported for security patches and the basic core structure of the operating system for bug fixes, I think the 10R is still a solid buy. I would recommend people try and get up to an A13 today if they can. If you can, yeah. if you can somehow step up to an iPhone 11, I think you're in for better longer term support moving forward. So a little bit of a segue on this one, and I, it, this, I didn't get a chance to talk to you about this before, but do you think um, that with the fact that now iPhones start at 399, that this mm -hmm. could potentially have, um, I, I would say an impact as to maybe the resellability of an iPhone, the price the, the you know, iPhones historically have held price 
for quite some time. Do you feel now that people have the option of buying a 399 version of a device that it even would it even affect the market? Do you think as far as reselling, uh, maybe bringing down some of the 11 pricing on the on the secondary market like Swappa or so on? I I I don't see any good evidence to suggest it will. Um, okay, I, it might. I, I I'm perfectly you know I'm I'm sort of staging my opinion here purposely to say like I could totally be wrong, and if I could predict the future, I'd be a far richer man than I am today. Um, I I don't see a lot of good evidence to suggest that just because Apple has put out a less expensive iPhone that that resonates with Apple consumers in a way that it will affect mm -hmm. the pricing of other devices. Tech geeks yeah. are trumping up one spec, A13, A13, A13. General Apple consumers don't care. They don't care that Apple doesn't put battery specs on the spec sheets. That no. The <laughs> it's like... is about the same as the iPhone 8. Yeah. That's no, their they battery talk, They talk about them in hours, remember, like when they oh, announce no, no, a new no. phone. The yeah. very first bullet point on the specs page for the iPhone SE says, <laughs> about the same as the iPhone 8. That is their first battery spec for this phone. So I, I, I was talking more about their like whenever they did when oh, back yeah, in the day can, when they did used to the announcement 12 songs. And you're like, what yeah, they, I don't know. those are the metrics that they would actually throw out there. Do we say, you know, you'll get an extra hour. You know, we gave you 10 hours last year. This year is 11 hours of, uh, you know, battery life or so or, or you know, mm -hmm. so to me, it's um, I, I think yeah. the, the emotional the emotional connection between these consumers and this brand is so heavily entrenched that the, the resale value isn't going to be affected significantly because now there's a less expensive option. This is not an iPhone 11 being sold at 399. Yeah. This is an iPhone 8 upgraded. So those people who have the label emotional attachment that they use Apple as the same kind of lifestyle branding as a purse or as mm -hmm. a fancy pair of shoes aren't going to care in the slightest that there's a cheaper iPhone because they need to flex that they got the the 11 Pro and they're showing it off in an Apple branded case and you know they're they're sporting their AirPods Pro because they don't speak broke. Yeah. That person is not going to be swayed in the slightest by right. an, an iPhone SE and I think because of that because you still have a a top end on this market which ties into fashion very very heavily as part of the lifestyle conversation you're going to have the desire factor for those people spending more on these types of gadgets i i think all it does is expand the pricing to the lower end it doesn't affect the pricing at the high end so and exactly and i think that this kind of also is echoed here with um mimin uh mimin run mimin hopefully i'm saying that correctly memranglot Remember, I'm glad uh, it's, you know, a person that is going for the SE is somebody that is probably, you know, used to using the iPhone 8 and they're looking to upgrade, but still want to be more budget friendly, you know, conscious of when they're doing their, their totally. purchase. And, and, uh, it, and it, it's it, my grandmother on her iPhone 7. I now have an upgrade path for my grandmother on her iPhone 7. And. and the, that, you know, I would say definitely she will interest as far as the experience there. That's the main benefit um and i know we kind of like kind of got sidetracked with other devices it's it's always it's never focused <laughs> it's it never happens um so my my initial testing so what like i said I, in the video that i did uh, my initial testing on this one obviously has been uh focused on comparing this to and, and you'll see my video is not coming on that one for the next couple of days i want to spend the weekend with both devices um, i want to be able to compare it to the uh pixel so this is the pixel 3a xl mm -hmm. that i had from last year um obviously with the absence of the 4a and i think when the 4a comes out i think that will also make sense a little Absolutely. A bit more um not for me it's not a comparison of flagship processor in a uh, in a budget friendly device it's more of the user experience at that price point um, and kind of like what Apple and, and, and Google are doing right now, they're providing you a budget-friendly version of their devices. So the Pixel 4, Pixel 4 XL, obviously, you know, close to $1,000 there, you know, in, depending on where you're able to get it. Um, and the reason generally, uh, one, the, why I would always like to mention uh, swap or secondary markets, mm -hmm. um, there's a, a good number of my devices, uh, if they're not just released, are purchased on the secondary market. There's a For good... Sure. There's a good, there's a good, always a, a good reason for you to actually be able to kind of get gently used devices. And of course, unless you know somebody that's willing to sell it, 
Um, <laughs> and and the, the Pixel 4 is held up really nicely for me. The Pixel 4 okay. uh, XL for me is really, really good. The P Pixel 3a XL ha gave me such a big surprise for that price point. When we saw what Google was able to provide us at that price point, um, you know, and, and we're not talking flagship processing. So no. I felt like that's that's the one that you want to be able to say, you know, and it's right now, like I think was it two ninety nine? The price is even lower uh, for for the for the three A. Obviously, in anticipation of the four A, hopefully coming out in the next few weeks. Um, so that that's what I'm mostly going to be focusing on. I realized yeah, my, my early prediction because we're never really going to sway people. If you're Team Android, you're, you're not going to jump ship. Just just knee jerk a thirteen and a four hundred dollar phone. Like rationally, that's or if you do. I, I would have some questions about your mental state. Um, <laughs> sorry, that that was snarkier than I really meant it to be. Um, the 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 comparison here, and it was just something we talked about a little on my stream here, and it's something that I talked about recently um, on an Android Central podcast that's going to be coming out soon too. Yeah. I, as an as primarily as an Android user, care so much about what the iPhone SE is going to accomplish here because now it's going to be increased competition in one of the areas where Android wins by default. New purpose-built devices sub $500. Mm -hmm. Apple only checks in occasionally. Their big strategy has always been to use an older phone as like a recycle point to get to that lower price tier. The original yep. IC, uh, the original iPhone SE landed in the same year as the Axon 7 and the Honor 8 and the OnePlus 3T. And we had this incredible year of competition at $400. And yeah. now we need to see the follow through from Android manufacturers that I think have been getting a little lazy in this space, especially for what they send here to North America. So um, my early predictions, I think I'm going to like the Pixel 4a better uh, than the iPhone SE, primarily because I okay prefer using Android, but I think we're probably going to get uh, better stills camera performance out of Google's offering. The processing, yes. I mean, we have to appreciate the processing power that goes behind the 4A and the 3A. And, and yeah. I, I cannot stress this enough. Um, if one of your target considerations for a gadget is also, can it live with you for the full day? I think going with the mid-ranger chipset is going to be a benefit overall for where that phone is actually positioned. I don't think it's going to be a compromise. The iPhone SE is going to, to murk. It's going to absolutely dominate for these heavy lifting situations, but then you're going to be running on fumes by lunchtime. Like it, exactly. you're going to nuke that battery. And so while you know it's going to be frustrating to, to fire up a Pixel 4a and try and render UHD video and it takes 50% longer, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to make it through that render and have more battery left over to keep going on my day. And it's those types of intangibles, like the actual life and lifestyle of that gadget, that's more than just, does it have the biggest engine? There's no replacement for this placement, except unless you've got like a tiny little fuel tank. Because you have this yeah. tiny little fuel tank, uh, you know, your, your super awesome massive engine can't take you very far. <laughs> No, and, and so speaking of that, uh, just to talk about a little bit more and not to kind of circle a bit too much, but um, so Matt Tyler was asking uh, if we had a chance to talk about the ALG Velvet yet. I think that's the, the next thing that's coming up. Pro and, and, and he, he missed it out. He missed out on, and I realized right. LG's, right. LG will always come back in the conversation. It's, it, ne it never goes away. It's like, again, uh, and I apologize to people on your channel because it's like, hey, how can we sidetrack one? Someone say LG and he'll, he won't shut up. <laughs> It, it's it's definitely so as you guys probably already know hopefully within the next few days and about a week or so uh there's going to be an announcement talking about basically what the new lg velvet is it's a mid um uh, basically a, a mid chipset 765 uh chipset with 5g so uh, hopefully around the 500 by, uh, price point and i'm in, i'm hoping that it'll be coming to the us i'm not sure uh what the marketing strategy uh the early teasers that we saw are all in korean so there's always that anticipation that may be a more specific market only device, uh, but at least from the looks of it, it definitely looks like we're going to be getting at least somewhat of a contender around the 500. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I hope, I hope uh, that a lot of the camera uh, features that we love on the V series with the V60 yeah. do translate over. And of course, the quad DAC and all that experience that we're getting. And it, it ends up basically making a good, compelling conversation of, you know, do you comp compare this device from LG comparing it to the SE in that market? Um, 
the last thing I do want to mention before we go too far, when I want to circle back, um, I feel like the 4A or the 3A as well as DSC are great entry level phones. And I think the way I would present it to anybody is more of the, uh, if they're looking to get a device for their kids, they're looking to get a device for their parents. Uh, and it, again, echoing the ecosystem that you're more comfortable working with it. Uh, Steve kind of mentioned that, you know, obviously Android always has the ability of installing secondary launchers. Again, you have to value those things if you appreciate it and you want it. An Android mid tier uh, device, a Pixel 4a or a 3a will work much better. I'll, I'll uh, also go one further for you on that too. I mean, yeah, I, I feel like uh, Mighty Mouse phones get mm -hmm. written off as kind of uh, overly compromised alternatives. Um, I, I think there is a very strong argument for smaller form factor, but still decently powerful or premium devices for things like travelers. Yeah, I, I cannot tell you I am not looking forward to the day I can get off of an airplane again and I've got a V60 in my pocket as I'm lugging, um, you know, a, a rolling suitcase and a backpack and I'm trying to herd my daughter in her backpack and maybe a stroller or some type of car seat. My wife is having to manage multiple bags and I just want to look up what our connecting flight or what our next gate is. And I've got to stop everything to handle that phone. And a phone like the Xperia Compact, the original iPhone SE, this new iPhone SE, it's going to be so much easier to one thumb my way through a pretty myriad number of complex interactions mm -hmm. without breaking my stride. The only way I think I'll be able to survive a V60 in an airport is if I've got it paired up to like my focals. And I'm going through like a, a wearable face computer with a heads up display, which yeah. is a $700 accessory to fix the form factor of my $900 phone. Dollar. And, and this is going to be so much easier to navigate my day. I, I Again, no one is ever going to claim that small form factor is a is a large demographic that's being overlooked. It's It's a smaller community of people that value having the smaller premium phone but I feel like these people often get overlooked because we're just so impressed with with bigger and HDR and crazy mm -hmm. camera arrays and humongous batteries when this is a streamlined interaction. It's going to provide so much value to a community of users out there who want to at a glance and get on with their day at a glance and get on with their day. And they're not looking to spend a, a huge part of their day staring at this screen. And it, it is. It's definitely that, that experience. And I feel like it, it will it fits the the usability of what you're 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 going for and I, but my concern it always end up being being the battery life obviously for traveling and so on so i, I definitely would recommend oh, at also, least from touch, touch id is way better than in display let me just say that again touch id is so much better than in display <laughs> <laughs> i i don't think i understood what you meant i'm sorry you said what oh that touch id is better than in display in display That's Oh wait, yeah, no, no, definitely fingerprint sensor, and we we advanced so far with uh, you know physical fi fingerprint sensors. <laughs> your your reflection of your own video was in that little stream, and I'm, like, I'm trying to find like there's so much. I have so much lighting on the other side of these monitors that I I don't think I can get a, no, a non glare. But I mean, like, look at this. Look at this. Come on, oh, man. that's that's adorable. So uh, somebody's asking in the comment, obviously, is they they're trying to they're hoping for five G devices that are going to be uh, more budget friendly. Uh, you know, th there is a lot of devices coming in with 5G support uh, with the 7 Series. That's where the 7 Series is really going to shine, really, at least for the Android's ecosystem. Uh, I, I had an opportunity to see quite a few manufacturers that showed and demoed devices that were going to be around the $400 to $500 with 5G. Uh, and of course, as you know, I mean, the, the Pixel 4a, if it holds true to what we saw last year with the, th you know, with the uh, Pixel 3a, price point is going to be definitely very budget friendly. I'm hoping around the same price point where we were, so four to 500 roughly, that's going to be something that will keep them in the game and something that we can actually uh, appreciate having on the in the ecosystem. Um, it's still just to be to seen how the support for technologies. I mean, the 765, I think, is using in the X52 modem. It's not using the X55. So there's always that, that little bit of uh, experience that needs to be tailored. Uh, but 5G as a technology in the US, at least, it's still growing. It's still new. We're starting to finally see more carriers carry it as an actual thing that they sell. Like last year, I think Sprint was the only one with some areas for Verizon, uh, AT&T and T-Mobile. Well, and, and it was it was Sprint with, um, well, it was Verizon, I mean, rolling out uh, millimeter uh 
they did, but they rolled it out in I think uh, eastern cities, right? I mean, they were said like a few couple of spots where people were going to yeah, test. I mean, it was Chicago very, it was, was one of them. Yeah, it was very, it was very localized. But um, but this is also going to be one of the one of the concerns and one of the perks as we talk mm -hmm. about phones. This is a difficult conversation to kind of fully encapsulate. So many regions, and again, I'm focusing mostly in the United States here. So many regions are going to get left behind. Yeah. So if you're in a really rural community and maybe you just finally started getting some respectable LTE, you should expect the same with 5G. You're going to be at the end of the upgrade train chain, and it probably won't make a lot of sense mm -hmm. to, to pick up a 5G device for that as a feature over the life cycle of that device. Uh, but if you're in an urban area or you're a decently population dense area, that might matter to you. It, it might exactly. matter to you that you're that you're getting a, a device that maybe you can't use the 5G today, but within the life cycle of that device, it, the towers will turn on for you. And that exactly. could matter. Um, but but the thing that's really going to burn us for early adopters here in the United States is the carrier fragmentation and limited support for carryover. So like, say you want to jump from, you know, T-Mobile Sprint to Verizon someday. It's always been tricky to move a phone from one carrier to the other mm -hmm. as a 5G device, as 4G towers start getting replaced with 5G towers, that's going to suck. <laughs> that's going to suck it, really bad. So we're going to have, yeah. You have to be fairly be confident that you're going to stick with your carrier for a good solid two years and that you're not looking to potentially jump from one carrier to the other and not have to rebuy your phone. 5G is going to take us into the same carrier lock-in for a couple of years as we used to have with 3G. Like the differences in support and radio banding and antenna and supported frequencies, it's very, it feels a lot like CDMA versus uh, GSM. So that, that's the last like kind of caveat or concern. I'm, I'm positive, Sprint, Sprint 5G helped a lot. Sprint for yeah. how badly Sprint was lagging behind this, these new radio antennas, these new radio arrays, congestion. That the improved mid, The mid-band 5G. Yeah, we, we, we both had enough so much. Yeah. We had an opportunity, uh, one and I last year to get a chance to go check out, a, uh, check them out at uh, Marina del Rey. And right. yeah, no, definitely where, where the, the LG V50 was the correct choice. Um, exactly. Honestly. And that, uh, <laughs> or the OnePlus 7, 5, OnePlus 7 Pro 5G, my friend. But no, uh, we did, we actually did a live stream off the V50. What am I talking mm -hmm. about? Yeah, we did actually. We, we live, did the live stream the, on the V50 and the V51 every single speed test that we ran between the OnePlus 7 yeah, and, the, and uh, the Galaxy. So I want to say, yeah, the S10 5G, I think that's what they had. They had, mm -hmm. they had basically three devices, but um, we'll, we'll bring it back. We'll talk a little more. I want to say thank you to uh, Mr. Comer. Thank you very much for the super sticker right there. Uh, I know a lot of people are still very active and very happy with how everybody's just jumping in there. Um, and it just so obviously there's no 5G here, but I do want to mention at least for, from a comparable experience, uh, the merger that we saw with T-Mobile and Sprint obviously is going to change a little bit some of that experience with the mid, mm -hmm. uh, mid band and low band and low band uh, 5G, because those are the two spectrums that are going to basically start being supported on both. And the hope is, I think, in uh, to have it in more cities. I think T-Mobile started to use some of Sprint spectrum in certain areas on the East Coast, but not on the West Coast yet. So. Uh, that could benefit a lot of people if you're considering getting a device yeah. uh, over, over that the supports next it. Months, it's going to be really exciting just to see them hopping on each other's towers. So, I mean, if you if you Absolutely. were like me and you were on Google Fi, mm -hmm. um, that was a decent perk. It was very rare that Sprint had better signal in an area, but occasionally it would happen and my pixel would just jump right over that that is a nice that's a handy little perk and so uh especially for timo subscribers and for sprint subscribers as we get yeah. i think into the second half of this year we're going to see that open up in more markets where they're just sharing more exactly and and just allowing you to use that spectrum and it, of course using the potential I, I feel like it's the potential of the x55 modem to a, a greater extent on your device uh, there's no obviously switch in between millimeter wave and non-millimeter unless it's pre-built in there and you have the antennas but uh yeah so at least now, for non non-millimeter wave i think you're getting that support there actually to kind of loop this back in since since i mean like the the, the focus of the stream is uh 24 less than 24 hours of with the iphone se um i think that might be one of my other bigger concerns with the phone mm -hmm. as a longer term solution like i said before if you're looking at more rural adoption or you're i mean like even where i'm at right now i, I moved even just a little bit further out into the suburbs uh, at the beginning of the year and uh 
my carrier, my network support out here is garbage. Like I'm happy when I can pull down a 10 megabit download, holding my phone up high in the sky, clear open air with no barriers around me. Um, for that kind of usage, it does actually concern me talking about uh, Apple's radio management modems and antenna arrays. Mm -hmm. uh, a, an iPhone SE with a two by two antenna that uh, Intel radio management that that's that that's the part of the phone alongside the battery. That's a part of the phone that might not age very gracefully. Um, when I compare my iPhone 10s uh, against, say, a OnePlus 7 on the edges of my Wi-Fi network, my OnePlus 7 it's like by a factor of three is able to mm -hmm. uh, download files three times faster is, is keeping signal so much better than what my iPhone is capable of. So, so those types of considerations probably need to be factored in somewhat too, you know, for some reason, Apple still treats connectivity on their, on their expensive mm -hmm. connected devices as an ultra luxury. And uh, if you're in a congested market, you're going to be hurt by a two by two antenna. If you're in a rural market, you're going to be hurt by um, an underperforming modem. Uh, an underperforming radio stack. So uh, that that also might be something to watch out for. I have every expectation that the iPhone SE is a, is a gadget that most of the core demo are hoping to hold on to mm -hmm. that phone for a couple of years, if not oh, three to four yeah. years. It, it's not, a, I don't think people purchasing this device are looking into, oh, I'll get at this and I'll try it for they're, they're looking into a device for the in the long haul and like you said somebody that's had the iPhone 8 for some time it, it's been a while it's been a while since we've seen the uh, iPhone 8 I mean we've gone through many iteration iPhones have changed entirely from what we've known in the past and this is kind of like seriously just uh almost like a um, I would say uh like a nostalgic feel of the iPhone 8 with upgraded internals uh while we were talking I did get a chance to I forgot to do a speed test on this uh allow um and because I do have 4G in my area I'm not registering 4G LTE but I I forget if uh if Apple does allow 4G LTE signals to show so let's go ahead and and punch in a little bit we'll do a live speed test with everybody on Ooh, the channel right you're seeing it here first folks Exactly. So I have full bars uh, connected. T-Mobile. Uh, we'll go ahead and give it. This is the Simi Valley uh, tower. We'll see how fast we're able to hit. And oh, not too bad. I mean, it's not the fastest. I've had faster. I usually average about forty to fifty on LTE. I don't know. Actually, we did register. It did hit up at the LTE signal. So um, overall, not too bad considering uh, you know the little uh, little guy thirty three down. I'm pretty sure if I go outside and I'm walking down the street, I'll be able to even hit over 50 to 60. So, uh, you know, performance wise should not be any different than I think if you're in a good enough coverage area. So that's the kind of to speak to what, what Juan is saying. So 33 down, 714 up. Um, and, you know, I can run another one just for the sake of the show, but it'll, it'll be the exact same thing. We'll move it to the left. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> nerd. <laughs> No, it, it, but, but, it seriously you know, but, depends but it's, on the it's, angle. It's what I'm yeah. talking about is is uh, is more issues of congestion. 4G yeah. and LTE are going to become devalued as we move over into 5G arrays. One of the, one again, I think 5G has been hyped on speed. Mm -hmm. The thing that makes me excited for 5G is better radio management, so that there's less congestion at the tower, so your connectivity improves. I mean, sure, that's gonna that's also going to make your connection faster but it, it's going to mean a more reliable signal and that that's not as sexy to put into an advertisement but for me that's the bigger draw when we're talking especially sub 6 5g the bigger concern i have is um you know how, how many people we go to and they've got one wi-fi router for their whole house you know my, my mom's true. house is like two and a half stories with kind of a sub basement and this beautiful patio mm -hmm. and you can only really get internet connection in the living room <laughs> get their one little ISP router like right by the TV because that's where it makes sense to stream their content. And then when you go downstairs, it's like you've entered a Faraday uh, cage. And, and you, 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 know, you need uh, management on, on uh, especially for home Wi-Fi. That's why I mesh. I, I like mesh routers. I love the fact that you're, there's functional there. There's really good way of managing it. And of course, uh, for me, I actually did end up having to buy a repeater just to kind of get good coverage in the office because yeah. um, where my modem is set up is actually upstairs on the other side of the house. So yeah, no, I, I, I hear you and I, and I feel the pain. Yes. <laughs> dead zones are dead zones, uh, even for Wi-Fi in, uh, in our home. Um, Let's see if we can have some questions and see if some what everybody's uh, chatting in there. 
uh, 4G, 5G these days. As, yeah, so it, so here, uh, Matt Tyler's kind of kind of echoing here. It's like 4G or 5G these days uh, on speed test, 99% of the time their connection is fast. And that's true. The reality is um, I've actually been able to test out some 4G LTE connections if with a good if I'm really within good range of a tower, I'm able to hit mm -hmm. 100 uh, to almost 200 down on, on 4G LTE. I'm not talking 5G. So um, yeah, and again, it, it depends mean, like, on the coverage. Whole, that whole speed conversation, you know, like, oh my gosh, look at how fast this is. And you're like, well, I mean, technically 3G, HSPA was rated for what, 44 down? Was that uh, the theoretical max? And, I think and that was the be expanded yeah. through a couple different, you know, antenna tricks and the HD, the tricks. HSPA plus, which is most, most international phones will do in the U S but no, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's more about the band support. That's realistically, especially with T with T mobile, uh, having certain bands in different areas. So that was always my challenge. I felt like, uh, you know, hopefully now we'll definitely have the better coverage, but at, at least with the SE, the to kind of keep it you know we'll keep the the general tone back to the se side mm -hmm. um i think it's it's reasonable to say that you know 4g lte should be fine as long as you're in a in a, in a basically i would say a, a, a populated area where there's a lot of towers and you're not sitting in a rural area you should be able to get a good experience with it um camera so far i think i've been it, i've been surprised with the with how well it actually performs it's i was i was yeah i i was i you know not having hdr video was something that i was looking at but like at the end of the day you know it's not that bad it, it you know i took the videos i put them on my pc it, they do great uh slow motion uh, looks good um uh, no 4k on the front i'm not bummed about that part i think because as you said mostly you're shooting 4k of somebody else i want to be able to get that best experience and the 1080p 30 for me looked pretty solid um, that's going to be fine. And and again, I, I feel like Apple was, um, I feel like Apple has made the correct decision on that being an acceptable video calling camera. Mm -hmm. like that, oh, that's the yeah. main purpose of, of, you know, the original purpose of having a webcam on the front of your phone was to have a webcam. And so, I mean, I think you're going to be doing fine for this current situation where we find ourselves in on Zoom calls. No, I know. Uh, the one thing that I do have to say for me, at least within the first day, as far as a challenge, because it's not it's not a, all roses and, and, you know, sunshines and everything on the other side. Um, I'm having to adjust having to use a smaller phone. So I, mm -hmm. I, I comparing this to most of the other devices, at least in the on the table right now or even behind me. Um, the smallest one is like a 6.2 inch other than obviously the 4.7 that we have here. Uh, it's 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 a little bit of a, a function and what i mean by that is it's adjusting to having used like when i use instagram and for me you know here i open up instagram th the page doesn't load the entire way and i feel like you know what i mean like i'm used to opening mm -hmm. it up bigger and so there's like the, four four pictures in, in it, your no, it, it, time. yeah no exactly so like i'm looking at it here th this is really the more of the real estate i'm actually peeking at the next uh you know, uh, there, and I'm actually even opening it, jumping into it. Let's go back here. Sorry, I keep jumping between two, but uh, like you can look at different ones. So, board it. E just posted a picture. Ricky's posting a picture. But those are the things, right? That's the experience that I'm, I'm kind of having to uh, work with. Not that it's a bad one, but it's just understanding the smaller form factor. And I think that'll be my challenge for the next few days. Uh, similar experience in Twitter when you're trying to scroll through your timeline. But that's why you buy a different device. If you're not happy with this, you're obviously going to look for it. But um, and, and that's, that's about most coming. That's why I keep coming back to that phrase at a glance. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I, small form factor phones are not great consumption devices. You pick it up, you you deal with that one aspect or, or that one notification or that one piece of communication and you put it back away. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the 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 mentality on that is going to be very different than the, I want to sit down and stare at my phone screen for long periods of time. That's why larger phones have become so popular for so many consumers out there. It, it, it's funny in a way. Um, I feel like there's a great argument to be made for owning a small form factor phone being the bigger luxury flex. You know, this is mm -hmm. the bigger privilege is because when I show you that I've got a tiny little phone, and I'm a super tech savvy dude, you can be pretty confident that I'm backing this phone up with myriad other larger displays and that I have the luxury or I have the privilege of using just a little communicator device um, to handle just my communication. And then I've got a multimedia device when I wanna handle my multimedia and then Media I've got device. tablets and laptops and, 
and docks and connectors and a workstation. I've got the entire gamut of, of, screen, of screens moving up. Yeah, no, I, and I think that's the, that's the main beauty of it. And I think I, I, you could appreciate having that easy, quick look, get your information, get it out of it, get it done with it, and move on. Uh, but yeah, no, we're, we're not trying to sell this as a powerhouse. This is, again, I think you you described it best, uh, the Mickey Mouse, basically. It's basically a Mighty picker-upper. Mighty, Mighty Mouse. Uh, oh, man, Mighty Mouse. You dated it back. Uh, do you mm -hmm. remember back in the day when a smaller phone was the actual uh, oh, yeah. premium tier? Remember totally. the Nokias, the little slider phones we used to I see? Mean, like, it was like that, uh, that joke in Zoolander where like, you know, you could like swallow the, the thing. Yeah, the yeah, no, so exactly. Cool. He's talking on the phone. So uh, trends will change and they'll go back and forth. And, uh, you know, of course, it's always going to be in that sense. Um, so with that, I, I feel like we still have some work to do. Obviously, this is just the initial impressions. I think we're both looking at some of the positives and some of the concerns. Uh, battery for me, it's definitely going to be a big, uh, big thing. Obviously, if you're trying to do any heavy lifting with uh, gaming, uh, I haven't had a chance to run it through my my gaming suite of applications just to see basically battery consumption within an hour. Does it last <laughs> through a few matches? Huh? So uh, I, I will more than likely be uh, employing the assistance of my son uh, to be obviously be able to get in a few matches on, uh, uh, you know, uh, on Fortnite just to kind of get things going there. Uh, I definitely I did. I made sure to install uh, a few games in here. So Fortnite is already installed, ready to go. Asphalt 9, of course, and some additional ones, uh, just kind of general gamings, but just to kind of get the experience of, uh, you know, how is this? And again, the audio on this is actually really good. Content consumption is, is actually reasonable as long as you're comfortable Solid. with the form factor and you need to, you know, consider that fact. It's not kind of, it's not trying to compete with the 11 and the 11 Pro Max. It's not trying to compete with the 8 or the, the uh, you know, iPhone, uh, any other device. It's its own uh, it's its own section and it's giving you the best that it can in that section. So I just mean, appreciate it that way. It's it's really a shame that it not only doesn't have the headphone dongle in the box, that if there were any iPhone to have a built-in headphone jack, this would make for such a strong argument as a multimedia player. Um, you would easily be uh, um, like, uh, cannibalizing the remnants of the market in the like $200 digital audio player segment. Mm -hmm. um, the Apple headphone jacks were solid. I, I don't know that I would put them anywhere near the audiophile grade hardware on like a Fio or, a, or I mean like or on an LG obviously, but you could make such a strong play for an iPod style smartphone again at, at, yeah. at this tier. It's just, we know Apple was never going to give us that. We know Apple is, is really wanting to encourage you to buy the extra accessories. And I refuse to, to plunk down on AirPods because um, I hate them. Uh, but um, there, there's, yeah, there, the, the, the open the air killer. experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that to me would have been one of the last like killer perks to really recycle like the iPhone 6S design would have been you know, to, to bring that back, but, uh, I, I knew it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, so, uh, Aditi Anil and Matt Tyler are like pranking me right now. So, you know, they're like, you know, TK versus Omar. And of course, then, you know, you gotta be able to check out the candy crush. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Woo! definitely. Yeah, no, definitely. And um, I'm actually, Matt Tyler, make sure, please, uh, we talked about it last night, but I didn't chance if you saw it, but make sure to, to link both Juan and I, uh, when you guys do get that, uh, the your, your live stream going on, I'd love to be able to join or even just basically watch and enjoy the content that you guys are going to put out. Uh, really, really but happy you know, that you guys are starting something. For gaming, I'll be curious to hear your thoughts because the yep. original iPhone SE, like I said, thanks to the lower resolution display, um, I, I mean, I was benching games like Marvel Future Fight back then, real, mm -hmm. really heavy. And this was the absolute best performer, but it was insanely hard to play any type of in-depth game. And I it's the real like, estate. Yeah, the display yeah. real estate kind of limits it because of the, the on-touch. I mean, everything is on the display, so your fingers are covering half of and, the experience. And it gets down into like the little menu buttons. Like I, on, on so many games on the iPhone SE, I literally could not tap the menu buttons because all of the ui elements were so small so I'll be, I'll be curious to see what your thoughts are on this new se because i kind of feel I, i'm in the same I, it's going to be an incredible performer the battery life is going to evaporate stupid fast <laughs> but i'm not sure i'll actually be able to play some of these games if they have any type of detailed control setup I'm looking at like um like Battle Chasers as like a, mm -hmm. a, a JRPG, um, Diablo style clones where I've got to manage. 
um, you know, like equipment and upgrade and repair and stuff like that. I think the experience is going to be very, very poor, even though the gameplay is going to be wicked fluid uh, just for not having that extra space. It's it's definitely going to be an experiment. But uh, one of the reasons why I chose my son. Mm hmm. Small, Small hand. fingers. <laughs> my, 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 Actually, my I, I did. Uh, but I, all so I would be able to show you is is her interactions with like Khan Academy kids. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> uh, but well, I, I'll definitely gaming the hard hitting gaming commentary and uh, you know interactive learning at home. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I it, we are in a different. I mean, it, we are in a very unique experiment uh, time now where we are relying heavily on on our technology. I mean. We, uh, we appreciate having a tablet. We appreciate having a device that can connect online and connect us with others. Um, so for those things and having the ability of using, uh, you know, Duo or using, uh, you know, obviously, uh, if you're, you want to be basically do FaceTime with an iPhone, those are things that you want to be able to appreciate. And I think the SE will fit that bill quite well, especially in the times that we're in. Um, and if very, very much so a, a very friendly, budget friendly uh, type of a device. So that's something you want to keep that in mind. And, um, and for Android fans out there, because I know a majority of our audience is probably more Android leaning than iOS. This is exactly what we want to see. We want to see Apple coming out with price competitive options to light a fire under our favorite manufacturers to rejoin a conversation about more reasonably priced gadgets. We, exactly. we want that. We want that really bad. And I, and I think the, the latter part of 2020, hopefully we'll start seeing some more competitors in that market. And, um, you know, so definitely really happy with this. Last time we got a chance to talk, we obviously we, we talked about the brand new devices. And today we're covering specifically, uh, you know, that was the V60 back then. And we're talking now, obviously, about the uh, not the V60, but the, you know, product red. And um, I actually chose the product red mostly because of the, uh, the, the, you know, the support that it also offers and the contributions that it does. So it's one of those things that you always want to appreciate having. Uh, a product that you do, you buy from a company that is also supporting current causes, kind of like the situation that we're going in right now, and uh, we'll do that. But uh, with that, I want to say, uh, if there's, do you, is there anything else that you want to cover on it? I, I feel like we kind of did a good round around with with the SE, because between this and the live stream that we did last night, I think we've covered <laughs> the extent of <laughs> I, initial I, I will impression. Say, like especially not for being so exhausted at making it to the end of the day yesterday. I, I feel like we did a better job of actually staying on, on topic for your stream than we did on my stream. Um, no, no, I mean, like, it, really, it's now just the, 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 final, the final usage, the polish, the answering some of those last questions that we have about the performance yeah. of this device. I, you know, the, the thing is, it's nice when you can confidently go into a review. I'm mm -hmm. very confident I'm going into this review for a product that is going to do a very good job of satisfying the demographic of people who might be interested into it, interested in it, and mm -hmm. Apple's marketing claims. When I went into the iPhone 11 Pro, I felt Apple had set their claims so high that no device could really achieve what their marketing was purporting to be the experience of using this phone. The SE is a completely different conversation at a completely different price point. And it feels already in my very early interactions that Apple is succeeding tremendously well at satisfying the marketing and the demographic for this device. So that feels yeah. good. It always feels better to go into that and, and have that kind of experience and have that. What, what is it that Brandon, um, what, what is it his, his uh, like price to price to delight or something like that, you know, like. Oh, uh, but, like the bank for the buck kind of thing, but yeah, price, but it's his yeah. it's his little twist on bang for buck. It, it's like price to the some someone please correct me. I I know I'm I'm misremembering it. I wanted to rip it off, but I want to credit him. But I'm totally gonna rip it off. Um, you know, you pick up a Pixel three A, and it's a wonderful experience first and foremost, and then it's a great feeling for the price. Mm -hmm. The iPhone eleven Pro is a wonderful experience. And doesn't feel that great when you factor in like a $1,300 price tag. The yeah. iPhone SE gets us back to something like that for Apple where full stop. It's just a great example of what you can do in small form factor. It's a fluid, crazy, snappy little mighty mouse. Mm -hmm. And then the price comes in and you feel even better about that. So it, 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 that that is always a more satisfying review process than always you know kind of kind of like 
chewing your nails on a phone that costs over a thousand dollars, man. Cause any little misstep, any, any mm -hmm. little glaring defect, any, any little bug, man, that sucks when you're spending over a thousand dollars on a phone. And it is. And then the price, the prices are getting higher and higher. We're not seeing more, com we need more competition in the realm of where we are, the mid rangers, uh, which we, you know, back in the day, people weren't even, you know, they would even pass them off and not even consider them. But now we need to have that mid, that mid tier filled, filled in, especially mm -hmm. in the U S market. I think, um, well, uh, Steve mentioned it earlier, you know, the Asian market is lightning ahead, uh, ahead of us with, uh, devices that are in that market. So we'll, we'll have to well, see how that goes. And there are going to be some fun matchups. I mean, like even just in the Android side of the equation, uh, mm -hmm. Moto, not not mm -hmm. the strongest option, but is going to have a decent player at around this four to five hundred dollar tier. Yeah. I am so anxiously awaiting TCL. The work that TCL has done as an ODM for other labels has been fantastic. For, and exactly. now coming out with their TCL 10, there, there is so much potential there for them to, to just blow it up HTC style with their own label on a gadget. Um, I'm still fingers crossed that we'll see a follow up to the Xperia, uh, the Xperia 10 mm -hmm. as another solid option in this like three to five hundred dollar tier. This I mean, again, for the United States, we're starting to get some more, I, I mean, like recommendable competition. These aren't yeah. phones that I'm, I'm passing off to people because they're poor and they're broke and you got to have something. So you might as well have this garbage purpose built solutions at this price point. Mm -hmm. are starting to become very interesting solutions beyond just like, well, I guess you could buy last year's phone, maybe. That, it, it, it definitely it, you're you're not compromising with it. I think we heard we so we saw the announcement. We saw that the 10 and the 10, sorry, the 10 Pro and the 10 L hopefully will be uh, will be releasing soon to the US market. And I think there was a 10 5G, but no, no indication that this one was coming to the US. I think the announcement for the US was for the Pro and the L. Uh, but yeah, no, I was very excited to see TCL uh, go into, into that actual form factor. I mean, they even have foldables that they were talking. They showed different concepts going on, uh, and they have some interesting uh, things going on there. Uh, but yeah, uh, with that, we'll we'll kind of you know circle back. We'll say thank you very much to everybody for thank you obviously to Juan for for joining me here of over course. on the chat Thanks for, for again uh, friend of the channel, friend a uh, friend as a person obviously, and friend to everyone of course that we have here in the channel. Uh, Aditya Neil, Mr. Comer, uh, Steve DeRoche, uh, and of course uh, we didn't get a chance to see Matt. Uh, sorry. Um, Fat Produce, but uh, good morning to him wherever he is, uh, and everybody, of course. Matt Tyler, thank you for joining us, and uh, looking forward to doing more coverage on this. Uh, I did get a chance to post a video early, right before the 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 actual live stream started, mostly just an unboxing, some quick testing, water IP testing uh, for the iPhone 8. Uh, if you guys would like to check it out, please make sure. But uh, Juan, if you don't mind, let us know how does every. I mean, obviously, without without any explanation everybody knows who you are uh but you no. know how does how does everybody get in touch with you and what 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 is the best way to find you and get, get communicate with you of course so i some gadgetguide.com is where i'm just sort of lumping everything that's where you'll find my new egg content what i get to guest on other people's podcasts i like to link it on my blog uh the support mm -hmm. pages uh my affiliate links and you know branding partnerships the patreon all of that you'll, you'll find oh of course time on uh, somegadgetguy.com. But then around the web, if you want to hit me up on social media, it's some gadget guy everywhere I could I could nail that that username. So Twitter and Twitch and uh, Instagram. I, I'm, I don't really use Facebook. I know a few people like to try and reach out to me there. But if I check in on that once a month, that's kind of excessive for my Facebook use these days. But um, but I mean, again, I, I, the, the most immediate place to kind of catch my attention and get into a conversation is Twitter. And then mm -hmm. to catch the actual content that we're all working on, it's somegadgetguy.com. Definitely. And make sure you check him out also on Patreon as he kind of really gracefully passed that. Um, he does actually provide a lot of content that is um, Patreon specific, uh, exclusive, that it also includes deep dive into the audio performance, deep dives into camera performance, and we're talking mass amount of hours of work. So definitely one of the things I love about watching Juan's work and over the years appreciate his expertise when it comes into actually, when he was talking about the benchmark, it's because he has the data from earlier devices that he played with and how he how does that compare so 
make sure to check him out. Links will be in the description as usual. And I'm sure you'll see him, he and I, uh, you know, chit-chatting over on, on Twitter, or, you know, going back and forth, or uh, even in the uh, Discord service, if you'd like to get in a little bit more with the Patreon crew, uh, which a good number of the people here in the in in the chat are actually from the crew. So definitely I, appreciate it there. I, I cannot thank the, the people that have been participating enough, especially seeing some of those names like Aditya and Steve and Gary the Fireman. Yep. Um, uh, Absolutely. And, and Matt, yeah. It started yeah, out yeah. As, as, as a total, like, I don't know what to do with the Discord. It's it's the contributions of those members. Ronald Collins, Matt Tyler, again, like so many of them. Um, the, uh, the Discord has become one of my favorite places to hang out. And I didn't really have much to contribute to my own Discord to make it that way. <laughs> um it, it is it is really a phenomenal group of tech pals and and i mean that I, first and foremost like i wake up in the morning and people are checking in on each other i go to bed at night and people are are sharing and it's a it's a global conversation with viewpoints from around the world it, it really has become something special so i i i again words are insufficient to properly express my gratitude but uh, it's a it's a fun crew Absolutely. And um, just to kind of also kind of circle back um, to whomever celebrates us, happy Ramadan, Ramadan Kareem to everybody. Um, we are, we started, that was yesterday, it's day two now, <laughs> we're doing good. Um, but uh, with that, I uh, will say thank you very much again. Uh, this obviously is going to go up. I, I, I'm not going to forget, I am going to be posting the audio version of this live stream um, within a few hours as soon as I get it over on um, archive.org. And I will basically uh, start getting uh, at least the link for you, but you'll be able to play it directly off of there. And I will get an RSS link. I am not. I didn't Everyone forget what you said last night. make fun <laughs> of TK for not giving me a podcast. No, so it's, 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 I, I need to. He yes. already makes the show. All we need is a way to subscribe <laughs> so we can just automatically it. download it. I know. I know. And <laughs> it, it's, it, it is my project for this weekend. Um, I'll be archiving the... I do have an archive from last week's audio podcast. So the beautiful thing about StreamYard, which I, I really appreciate... It actually archives it in audio and in video, so I'm able to mm -hmm. download the con the content right away. I don't have to do much unless I needed to edit something out. The audio is already done. I just literally have to just get it hosted. So uh, that's my project for this weekend. It will be available, and I will make sure to tweet it out and, and of course, post it over on Instagram, Twitter, uh, as well as YouTube to make sure everybody catches up on it. So I appreciate it, and I, I will do it. I, I promise it's due. We'll get it. We'll, we're getting there. I love it. I just, oh we're back <laughs> for the two seconds um so with that thank you very much we'll see you guys on the next live stream with uh another saturday morning with tech bam